Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095, Basic Algebra. In this video, we're going to look at section 5.6, which is applications. And these applications are going to deal with number problems and consecutive integers. Now, there are strategies when doing uh, application problems. Some people call them story problems. The strategies that we should take is to first read the problem and have a goal in mind when you read that. Uh, application. Understand the words. And the reason why I say understand the words, the first time you read it, that should be your one and only goal. Do I understand the words? If it gives me a word like a right triangle, if I don't know what a right triangle is, I'm not going to be able to continue on to solve the problem. A right triangle, as an example, is a triangle that has one angle of 90 degrees. I would have to know that information and understand the terminology before I can move on. The second step is, once you've understood the words, read the problem a second time. Look for what's given information. If it tells you something that is concrete, like maybe you have five of something, or it gives you concrete information, what is given, then you read it a third time. This is where you're going to assign a variable. You're going to ask yourself as you read it, what is it asking me to find? What is given? What, is, what am I supposed to find? So you have to read a story problem, in my perspective, a minimum of three times before you even put the pen to paper, before you even begin. The fourth step is to build an equation and solve it. And I'm going to be honest with you, this is the hard part. This is why we take math. Building that equation is where we use critical thinking to relate what's given to what we're asked to find. And that takes practice. And you can't just skip the story problems. You need to practice. They're always going to be there. And they're the most representative thing that we can do in a math class that is going to relate to what you're going to encounter in the real world. So try the story problems each and every time. Read it three times before you even begin to use critical thinking to associate what's given and what you need to find. Build that equation. It is the hard part, but muscle through it. Once you've solved the equation you've built, you need to read the question one more time. And in doing so, you're asking yourself, does my answer make sense? And does it actually answer the question? Did I find the answer in which it was looking for? And always remember to use units, because that's an important part of application problems. So <clears throat> if we just reassess here, you're going to read a story problem at minimum four times. Three times before you start to build that relationship equation, and a fifth time to make sure you answered the question. Keep trying. Don't get discouraged. It's only going to come with practice. Math is not a spectator sport. It's a skill, and you get it through repetition. All right, so let's move on. And we're going to define a few things before we actually get into some application problems. And the first thing we're going to define is what is a consecutive integer? Well, numbers that are consecutive means if we had a number line, they would be right next to each other. Consecutive would be an example of 1, 2, 3. If we look at what we have here, if we have some number, the next consecutive number would be one more than the first. The first number is our reference. If we want to know the con next consecutive integer after that, maybe what we call the second consecutive integer, it would be two more than the first. So that first is our reference. So as an example, if this was 1, the next consecutive integer would be 2, which is one more than 1. The second consecutive integer would be two more than 1. 3 would be the next the second consecutive integer of 1. So 1 plus 2 would give us 3. So <clears throat> when we define consecutive, it means if we had them on a number line, if this was n, one more space over would be one more than n. One more space over would be two more than n. So we're just increasing by 1 for each consecutive integer. Sometimes we're going to be asked, about even consecutive integers. Well, if we think about even consecutive integers, 
we're looking for the even numbers. Well, let's start with 2, our first even positive value. If I want to know what the next even integer is, or the consecutive even integer, I have to go two spots away. So if this is n, and I know n is even, two spots away is where I'm going to find the next even number, or the consecutive even number. If I want to know the second even consecutive integer, I have to go two spots from that, which is four spots from where I started, n plus 4. And we see 2, 4, 6, 8, that would continue. So if this is a number like 2, 2 more than that would be 4. 4 more than the first would be 6. <laughs> I had to think about it. That happens sometimes. So that's how we find even consecutive integers. They're always two more away. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 away from the starting value. When we talk about odd integers, they have that same behavior. So if I have a number line and I'm asked to find odd consecutive integers, well, let's say this is my first odd value. The next odd value would be two spots away. The next odd value would be two more than that, which is four away from the first. So again, it's the same pattern. Because if we think about our numbers, if this was 1, I'd have to go two spots away to get to the next odd number, which would be 3. So if I take 1 and add 2, I'd be at 3. If I want to know what the second odd integer is, that would be 5. Well, why is it 5? If this is 1, I have to add 4 to it to get to the second odd consecutive integer. So 1, 3, and 5, they're always separated by two values. Okay, So we have that. So we have to keep this in mind, n, n plus 2, n plus 4, if we're asked to find even or odd. We just have to realize that the first value we're looking for is either even or odd, depending on what we're asked to find. So let's look at an example here. It says, if x is the first of two consecutive even integers, express the sum of 20 and the second consecutive integer as an algebraic expression. Now, this is the first time I'm reading the problem. And I'm just assessing, do I understand the words? We define consecutive even integers. So I know I'm going to use n plus n plus 2, or well, n, n plus 2, and so on. Even consecutive integers is always going to be two more each one. So we're talking about 2, so the first of 2, so n and n plus 2. And it tells me that x is the first. Oh, so instead of n, it's telling me to use that. So now that I'm reading it a second time, I'm saying, what's the given information? It's telling me to use x. It also tells me to express the sum. So at some point, I'm going to add. So that's given information. Maybe I put the symbol right there of 20 and the second consecutive integer. Given information, this would be the second one. This is the first. This is the second. So I have to express the sum of the 20 and the second consecutive integer as an algebraic expression. This is an important term. An expression means no equal sign. It's just going to be some values of operations. So now that I have that, what is it asking me to find? An algebraic expression. So if I read it a third time, I'm saying that's, my, that's what I'm asked to find. So now I have to put them together. It says I need to use the second consecutive even integer. And I'm going to add it to 20. So this plus 20. The second even integer and 20. So there we have the expression. And if we wanted to, we could simplify it even a little bit more. But we weren't asked to do that. We were just asked to express it as an algebraic expression. Does this make sense? Well, if I have an even number and I add 2, it's the next consecutive even integer. And I'm going to add 20 to it. So this is what it asked me to find. 
All right, <clears throat> does that make sense? That's what we have to consider. We have to say, OK, did I do what it asked me to do? Did I answer the question? And because of this particular one, there are no units to use. They're just numbers. All right, so let's move on to some others. Here we have, if the sum of a number and 5 is tripled, the result is 1 less than twice the number, find the number. So now I'm going to assess. I read it. I understand the terms. I know what a sum is. I know 5. I know what that means. I know tripled means I'm going to multiply something by 3. That's a unique word. And this says 1 less. And I know less tells me I'm going to subtract. And twice tells me I'm going to multiply by 2. So I understand the terms. Now I'm going to see what's given. It says the sum of a number and 5 is tripled. So I'm going to add something together. That's given information. And something I'm going to add is 5 and a number. And then I'm going to triple it. That's the order in which I read it. That's the order in which we'll do it. The result is 1 less than twice the number. So I'm going to multiply something by 2, and it has to be 1 less. So now I'm going to say, what am I supposed to find? Find the number. That number appears in this story problem twice. So I want to have something that has it twice. So now I'm going to start to build it. I read it a third time. The sum of a number, I don't know what that number is. Here's where I assign the variable, reading it the third time. The sum of a number and 5 is tripled. I have to triple that value. So I'm going to introduce some parentheses because I have to triple that sum of a number and 5. And it says the result. That's a key word. That means equal. 1 less than twice the number. Well, twice means I'm going to multiply by 2 the number. I don't know what that number is. And that's where it appears twice, like I had mentioned. Is 1 less. Oh, 1 less. I can subtract 1. That's what 1 less means. So now that I have this, I can find this number. And I'm not going to do that for you, because if you reviewed the last video, you learned how to deal with linear equations. So you can go ahead and solve this yourself. All right, let's take a look at this question right here. It says, the governor of Washington makes twice as much as the governor of Nebraska. If the total of their salaries is 195000 what is the salary of each? Now, when I read it, I feel comfortable with the terminology. I know the governor of Washington makes some money, and the governor of Nebraska makes some money. And the total of their salaries is 195000 So of the given information, when I read it the second time, I say, OK, his money and his money total tells me to add them together is tells me equal 195,000. That's given information. Now I have to assign a variable. It says the governor of Washington makes twice as much as the governor of Nebraska. I don't know how much the governor of Washington makes, but I do know as given information it is twice as much as Nebraska. So let's say Nebraska is my variable. It's going to be x. Well, Washington makes twice as much as the governor of Nebraska. Well, twice as much tells me x. Twice says to multiply by 2. So now I have this information, and I can put it together with this. I've assigned the variable. Now I'm going to make that relationship between what I know and what I'm asked to find. So the total of their salaries, so Nebraska plus Washington, the total of these two values is 195,000. So building that equation, that's the hard part. And it's only going to come with practice. Math is not a spectator sport. You have to do the practice. Now from here, you can solve it. You could combine like terms and undo the math like you did in the previous section. Um, so this would be good practice. Find that answer and then reread the question. It asks, what is the salary of each? So you have two answers, Nebraska and Washington. Once you find that x value, you make sure you plug it into both places because you're asked to find two values. And don't forget units. All right, 
Sometimes we can draw an illustration. And hopefully, we can use that to help visualize what's taking place in the story problem. So if we read this, it says, a 40-inch board is to be cut into three pieces, so that the second piece is twice as long as the first, and the third is five times as long as the first. If L represents the length of the first piece, find the length of all three pieces. So I read it. I feel comfortable with the terminology. I know what a board is, and I understand the measurement of inches. And we have three pieces, a first, a second, and a third. So maybe I draw an illustration and look at the given information. So if I draw this piece, this is the first piece. If I read it, it says, the second piece is twice as long. So I draw a piece of that board that's twice as long as the first. And it says, the third is five times as long as the first. If L represents the length, so this is still the given information, this is L. The second piece is twice as long. Well, that would be two of my L's. And the third piece is five times as long. That would be five of my L's. And L's is just representing the length of the first piece. It says, find the length of all three pieces. So now it's time to read it to build my equation. So the third time I read it, I, it says the board is 40 inches. All the pieces, if they were still together as a single board, is going to be 40 inches. Well, if I add up my individual pieces, I will have the total length. Here I'm using that term total. Even though it wasn't in the story problem, that's the concept. So if I add this piece to that piece and this piece to that piece, it better equal the total length of the board. So now we've built our equation. We're ready to solve it. I can solve this for L, which represents the length of the first piece. Find the length of all three pieces. So first piece, you find this value. The second piece, you multiply it by 2. The third piece, you multiply it by 5. Find all three values. So you're going to have three answers here. And don't forget units. It's very important. You read it that last time once you find an answer and make sure, does it answer the question? Or do I have to put it back in to find other pieces or parts to the question? All right. Our last example here is a plumber gives an estimate of $404. He charges $27 per hour. And the parts needed are $80. How many hours should it take the plumber to complete the job? This is a real world example. Maybe you get an estimate from uh, someone who's going to do some work for you. And you think, well, make $27 an hour as plumbers goes, that's pretty cheap. So maybe, uh, maybe I want to shop around because he works really slow and that's why he can charge a lower rate. He's still going to make the same amount of money, maybe even more. So we got to be informed citizens. And that's why we learn these things. So I'm going to read it a second time because I'm familiar with the uh, terminology, a plumber gives an estimate of $404. So that is what he's going to charge me. He charges $27 per hour, and the parts needed are 80. That's given information, $27 for every hour he works, and then $80 for the parts he's going to need to do the job. Well, the parts, you only need to get them once, right? How many hours should it take for the plumber to complete the job? The hours is my variable. So he's going to charge me $404. And I need to find out how many hours it's going to take him to do the job. So this $404 he's charging me consists of $27 for every hour. I don't know how many hours. So I'm going to call that my x. Plus, he's charging me $80 for parts. Well, I have to add $80 the cost of the parts. And as we can see here, we have $27 times the number of hours it's going to take him, plus the $80 for the parts is the total estimate of 404. And when we finish reading it, it says how long or how many hours should it take for the plumber to complete the job. Don't forget units when you solve this. Good practice for a linear equation. Go ahead and solve it. Don't forget units. And think. Once you get that value, does it make sense? If it takes him 50 hours to do a job, 
Well, you might want to look for a different plumber, or you might want to check your math, too. So go ahead and work that out. Make sure it makes sense. And don't forget units. So this has been Section 5.6, Applications. Thank you for watching.